Are you guys ready for part three of our Predator Pod buddy build? Let's get started. All right, guys, well, welcome back. If you've been following along, I've completed the ship and the figure, and so I'm ready to begin now with the display base. All right, so let's get started with the base, but before I do anything, I wanted to share with you uh, these paper leaves that I found from a company called Duplicata Productions. So in the process of uh, doing some research on how to create a jungle base, uh, I came across this one video, this uh, person was using uh, paper leaves. So I started to research online where I could find paper leaves and happened to stumble across Duplicata. So Duplicata is a company uh, website based in Canada and they produce a lot of different uh, materials, particularly printed materials that you can use to detail your diorama. So uh, it's uh, geared towards military modelers, so you'll find a whole host of things on there, various scales, and one of the things they produce is foliage. And uh, so they happen to have two sets, uh, or two designs of jungle foliage, and I just got one set of each. Uh, there's a total of 80 leaves in each set, so I got a couple of sets here. And uh, let me just pull one up to the camera here, and you can see they are beautifully rendered. Uh, the sharpness is incredible, the colors are vibrant, uh, and they look quite realistic. Um, now, the way these are printed is uh, they, they actually have them printed, as you see here, but on the back side they also have a solid color. So there's a couple of things that you can do with this. You can combine the leaves. They are printed so that if you cut them out, they're supposed to be able to match one on top of the other, so you can have detail on both sides. Or the other thing you can do is simply cut it out. If you don't feel that the bottom is going to be seen, uh, you can get by with just uh, cutting out the top part and putting them together. As you put them together, you're supposed to, uh, at least it's helpful to put them on some wire and create a stem, and that's going to be my plan. All right, and one last thing to note here is that each of these sets ran a little over $10. Shipping was free. It did come from Canada, of course, so uh, it took a bit over a week to get to me. Actually, it wasn't really all that bad. He estimated it was going to take at least a couple weeks, but it took about a week and a half, um, and they got here just in time as I was ready to start this. So as I indicated in the last video, I changed over from using that wooden base to one now that's made with Fomular. And uh, Fomular is an insulating material you can find at Home Depot in big sheets. Um, that is a brand name and um, the sheet costs a little over six bucks for a, quite a large sheet. So I've been looking forward to using this sort of stuff. I know a lot of builders use uh, this type of um, foam for their dioramas. And I figured in this particular instance, since we're going to have to have stuff sticking into the base, uh, we might as well use something that uh, we can penetrate uh, versus trying to figure out how to do that on a, on a wooden surface. So um, it worked out really well. What I did was I just cut out uh, some thin pieces of wood that I got at Michael's um, and glued it on with uh, tacky glue. Uh, you can see I have a little opening here. This was supposed to be for a switch, and I say supposed to because I... I was originally going to put a red light underneath the ship that was going to be breathing, and you know what? You can't see it. Uh, it's not going to be very visible, and I imagine it's going to be even more concealed with the leaves all over the place. Um, so, you know what? I've decided to just not do any lighting at all. I mean, I already decided that with the ship. I just figured, well, maybe I could add this one element to the display, but you know what? Uh, I might as well just go without any lights at all since, uh, since the ship doesn't have any lights. Uh, it would make sense that um, I might as well just stay consistent with that. So I did create an opening for that switch, but since I'm not going to use it, I'm just going to leave it there. I do plan on painting this all black eventually. Okay, well the first thing I did was to apply this Vallejo Thick Mud. I happen to have this on hand from the Mr. Spock model way back. And uh, so since it's a rainforest, I figured it's always wet, so um, it's reasonable to assume it's going to be a soggy type ground. And uh, so it was easy to apply this, as you can see here. It's just a matter of spreading it across the display base and allowing it time to dry. So this is set to go. The only thing I have left to do is to paint the sides black. And the other thing I got was some uh, scissors here, so I didn't have things sharp enough or small enough to cut out the details that we need to with our uh, plants there, our leaves. And so this is just a nano tip uh, scissor from Singer that I got from Amazon, five bucks, and uh, it's for, as the label says, for fine detail work. So um, I'd like to get started first with cutting out the leaves before we do anything else, um, so let's begin with that. Uh, 
All right, guys. Well, I'm afraid I'm going to have to put the brakes on this uh, particular idea. Um, as I was putting this together and uh, piecing all this together, I was hoping that it would look better and better the more I went along. Unfortunately, this is really falling short of what I had in mind. Uh, a bit frustrating, of course, because I did put a bit of work into this, and like I said, I was just hoping as I went along that it would improve. But yeah, it's it's just not working for me. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to kind of set this aside here and just uh, do some rethinking. But I definitely need to try something different. I'll be back. Okay guys, well as you can see I've gone in a completely different direction here. Uh, what I'm going to go for is a base that is more like a rock. Um, as you can see I started off with something larger, uh, completely moving away from what I was going for with the other display base. Uh, but even that I found as I was working with it was just too large, still wasn't going to look right so I went with something smaller and that's what you see here. So what I've done so far is I've taken this formular and I have coated it I started out with just painting it with an acrylic black. After it dried, I was really satisfied with the way it was looking. I tried to carve some um, different textures in here to make it look like a rock. I moved further by coating it with this Mod Podge and black together. And that uh, allowed the uh, foam to be sealed like this. And I also applied it to these two rock features I'm going to be adding. Now, before I move on, I just wanted to show you a tool that I did get to help with uh, cutting foam, and that's this here. This is a foam cutting tool, and um, it's a tool that comes with a, a few different attachments. Um, there's two that look like a needle like this, and one that is a Y shaped with a, with a wire that's strung in between. Uh, if you're not familiar with these tools, they heat up to a high temperature to allow you to cut through the foam fairly easily. So um, it's definitely a useful tool, as I plan to do more with this material, it's going to be a nice tool to have on hand. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and push forward with this. Uh, what I have to do first is go ahead and paint it and do some detailing to make it look more like rock. And then um, the plan is to uh, mount these two rock pieces on this side with some of the plants and leaves here. And then I think I'm going to take this dowel or a piece of a dowel and create a uh, a partial tree on this side and what I'd like to do is extend the branches or I should say the roots so that they kind of snake along and uh, to create that I'm going to use milliput. Okay so the first step is to go ahead and paint so let me get started with that. The paints used here by the way were all craft paints and the first combination I used was Craft Smart's Brown and Apple Barrel's Country Gray. I brushed on the mix in light layers so that it could retain the black in all of the nooks and crevices for contrast. Next was to add a little bit more brown to the mix so that I could obtain more variations in tone. Next, I applied highlights using Country Gray. This was followed by sealing it all with Mod Podge, after which I applied one final black wash. This was the final result. Next up, the tree with snaking roots. After kneading both parts of Milliput, the dowel was put into place and I began to form and sculpt the three roots I had planned. Sculpting was done with these tools and my hands. Once the tree was completed, I created some surface texture using this 200 grit sandpaper. And it was then ready to paint. Again, using craft paints, I applied Ceramcoat's Territorial Beige for the base color. This was then darkened with black and brown to create some dark variations. And the highlights were done with Ceramcoat's Trail Tan. So now it's time for more detailing. Now the ground and rainforests are typically covered by fallen leaves. So to replicate this look, I gathered a bunch of dead leaves while walking around my neighborhood one day and ground them up into this fine mix. I then used PVA glue to attach them to the base around the roots and other areas. Next was to add moss. 
so I combined two types of ground cover, this green stuff I found at Michael's, and this blended yellowish turf that I happen to have on hand from previous projects. And this is how it looked when it was completed. Now the last step is to add the jungle foliage. Now before doing so, I applied PVA glue to the leaves. This is a trick I learned from a paper modeler I've become acquainted with by the name of Tim Striner. This gives the leaves a more natural waxy appearance, just as they would appear in nature. You know, as beautifully detailed as they are, when I put them into the last display, there was just something that bugged me about them they actually still look very much like paper. So I asked him for his advice and he came through with his technique. Thanks, Tim. All of these were cannibalized for my first attempt and I placed them into the display as I saw fit. Oh, okay guys, well this is how it's looking and I'm very happy with this. Um, it's looking much better than my last attempt here. I still have a few other things I think I'm gonna add but uh, I don't wanna go overboard so I'm just gonna step away from this for a little bit and just kind of uh, come back and look at it again and uh, see where else I can add a few more things. But um, yeah, much happier than I was versus my first attempt. Well, as the old saying goes, persistence pays off, right? Uh, you know, I wanted to actually show how it all came together for me uh, because sometimes I put these videos together and it might seem seamless uh, when everything's edited together, but it really isn't like that. There are a number of times when I'm putting something together and it's not quite heading in the direction that I want to go and that can definitely lead to some frustration. Best thing to do is to step away and uh, give yourself some distance from what you're doing and gain a fresh perspective. Uh, in this particular circumstance, I definitely want to give a shout out to Ken because he helped me iron a few ideas out and uh, in the end, it really helped me out with, uh, with uh, the final product here. So I'm satisfied with it. As I said, I might be doing a bit more adding to it here and there. I'm not quite sure. And I am going to actually step away for a little bit and come back to this shortly. But that is it for me in this video. So it's now time to head over to Ken and see what he is up to. Let's take a look. Thanks, Augie. Uh, what I'm working on this week and have worked on is the uh, Predator figure himself, which I've completed. Uh, very, very highly detailed figure. So even though he's only a few inches tall, maybe about four inches, he had a, a lot of detail and a lot of little intricate parts. So quite a bit of painting and different paints and different things that I put onto him, uh, including a, uh, a little special feature that I added. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I've initially begun working on the Predator. I'm not, I um, masked off and did the metallic parts of him, his body using the um, Alclad Magnesium. Uh, and then I also did another lighting on his head, his helmet. So I first got an aluminum Alclad on the head. And you can see I painted the dreadlocks in the back and his eyes. So what I wanted to do is I, I wanted to light up his laser um, targeting system so initially I drilled a hole through that little part there and I um, and I put a light through it now what I was going to do is I took these really thin fiber optics you can see right here that are kind of reddish but um, I tested them and I wanted to just have them really close to the helmet and have three distinct dots uh, but once I got these glued in and I lit them up, I thought it looked pretty cool. You can see the, the little dots lighting up. And so I decided to leave them as though these are extensions of the laser coming out of his helmet. Um, now when I first did it, I used a red SMD and red is pretty tricky. It doesn't always want to play nice with um, other SMDs. 
so it wasn't bright enough because it had to have a resistor on it so I dug it out and then I put in a white one that I put some red um, Tamiya over and it, this looks redder in real life than it does on here uh, and then I put some five minute epoxy over it now I ended up liking that look where it's almost like a mechanism that's lit up here and then shining through as a laser so I'm going to leave it as it is I kind of like it I will paint that wire once I get it put in permanently and uh, coming down around his helmet so let me again put this on the the body that I have so far inside the ship and we'll take a look at how that's going to look all right so there's the um the front and the window on so you really can't see inside that well you can see a little better in real life it's not quite as opaque or frosted trying to get close but you can make out the green and the red and there's something something in there I'm not too worried about it. If it if it weren't an odd shape, I would make my own and replace it, but it's it would be kind of tricky. Plus it's gonna be open, the whole front's gonna be open displaying it, so I'm not that worried about it. But if I take that off, that looks really sweet looking inside and seeing his his laser sight coming out and the lights in the background, that looks pretty sweet. So okay. So I began painting the Predator himself, and uh, the first thing I did was I used some gray metallic from Tamiya. To paint in the straps here, along this, I also used it on his cod piece there these side pieces right here. I used some uh, khaki on that leathery belt thing there and just some white on the skull on the side. There's the khaki. And then white on the little skulls right here as well. A little bit of just chrome silver, or I'm sorry, flat aluminum on that little medallion thing, whatever that's supposed to be. So I started painting his skin, as you can see. I began by painting a coat of Model Masters acrylic sand over the whole thing and let that dry. And then I took a brush and I went over it with some Model Masters dark tan. And I put the little splotches on just to give it kind of the two-tone look of his skin. I just did it randomly with a brush, just dabbing some on. I didn't really put the same kind of spots on his feet. I'm going to do a little more of a wash on those. I did it on his hands, the outside. I didn't really worry about the inside of his hands because you're, well, I did a little bit, but you're not really going to see those. They're going to be resting down on his lap when he's in a seated position. So, okay. So all I have to do now is go back over with the darker highlights and that's a little more of a pattern. And then I'll be all completed with the Predator. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm adding in the darker portions on the Predator's skin. So I already have the, the sand color and the dark tan color splotches. Now what I'm doing is I'm using some JN Green can't really hold that up. JA Green, I'm sorry, Tamiya. And I have some thinner. So what I'm doing is I'm dipping it in the thinner, then I'm dipping it in the paint, and then I'm dabbing most of it off to do almost like a dry brush, but it's a thin down dry brush. So you can see already on his legs that I dabbed around the edges of his thighs. I put a little bit on his feet. His thighs, not quite as noticeable, but it's almost like the the raised portions of his body like his biceps his his pecs on his chest that kind of thing have more of the um like a dark accent around them but they're lighter and then they're dark accent around them so that's what i'm working with to try to get um on this figure all right so let me go ahead and i'll show you here how to um how i'm doing it on the actual um 
chest and his arms as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start working on his chest. I just wanna kinda of slowly start doing it so it looks like a little bit Obviously, a lot of that isn't really exposed, but we'll, we'll do a little bit. So it's almost like his his big rounded bicep is ac accentuated by the the green. It's hard to get on this one here. Yeah, and I'm using green. Uh, I'm not quite sure. It's hard to tell because a lot of the pictures of him are in the dark. But I kind of like the, the darker green going along with the, um, with the tans. All right, so that side's done. Let's go ahead and work on the other one. And I don't want this to be too pronounced, too dark. But I want to see it. Sorry if this isn't in frame, it's kind of hard to paint it and view it. Okay, a lot of his um, chest is the same way. All right, I got a long way out of that one dab. I don't want it to be too wet. That's why I'm dabbing most of it off. Wasting a lot of paint, unfortunately. But I want it to be on there, but just not too, too stark. Almost like he's camouflaged in a way. Alright, so that one didn't go too long. It's a little bit more. He's going to have a wash over him as well, an oil wash, so that's going to make him look more slick and kind of wet and alien, that kind of thing. Let's try to get his hands a bit. Actually, not too bad. His hands are actually fairly dark. can do is while that's still drying I'll just take some thinner
Alright. Looking pretty good. Alright, so I'll continue with that, but that's kind of the general idea to get him finished off. Alright, so uh, I did a couple of things. Instead of using a wash on his skin, I went and put a clear coat. I just brushed it on to me a clear, which is kind of glossy. I let that dry. Uh, it was a little too glossy, so I went over it with some uh, some snow, just some white weathering powders, and that just dulled down the shine a little bit, but kept the sheen on it. And then I um, I used some oils, and I did a wash on his, his armor, and um, pretty much all the other parts except for his skin. I did a wash on to make them look a little dirtier and grimier. Uh, and then got them all glued together. I got his little shoulder cannon glued in place. His helmet, which I dirtied up quite a bit, as you can see, looks pretty sweet. I put his little claws on his right, right arm, painted those chrome silver, and then put some oils to dirty them up as well. You can kind of see the the dirt or the the oils on the um, on the metal, but it's not real obvious. It just sort of makes them look a little more worn and and realistic. So, all right, I um, I painted his staff. I didn't really know what the colors were, so I just used a couple of metallics and some rubber black, a little bit of metallic brown there on that one piece to stand out. And I glued that in place. All right, so he is all complete. He's looking pretty cool. Nice and uh, nice and evil. And his skin kind of mottled looking in different colors and some different highlights. So, okay. All right, so he is all complete. I'm going to go ahead and set him aside. There's his wire coming out the back. Sorry. To light up his, his laser um, aiming mechanism. So, okay. Fantastic. All right, so uh, I think he turned out really great. So uh, next week I will be finishing up the uh, diorama, which I've begun, and uh, we'll have our final reveal. All right, I will see you all then. Well, as you can see, Ken is doing a fantastic job with his project. I am looking forward to the final reveal, and that's actually what's coming up in our next video. So Ken has a few other things to finish up with his display base. Uh, I am pretty much done, so uh, the next video is going to kick off with him finishing up his project, and then we will do the final reveal, which will be fun. So thanks again for watching. If you have any questions for us, again, please feel free to leave a comment down below um, or email me at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.